Hello, my name is Cyclones Oz, and we are tracking Tropical Cyclone Angrek. You guys wanted me to make videos on storms that don't directly affect Australia. This storm was in the Australian region of responsibility, but as you can see, it is way out to sea at this point. And it's now a Category 5 strength severe tropical cyclone, the first official Category 5 strength severe tropical cyclone for the Australian season of 2023-2024. It's a very strong storm, but it's not expected to impact any land areas. And if you want more cyclone coverage, then please do click the subscribe button and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. But, um, and if you've got any feedback, then please be sure to leave that in the comment section down below as well. Uh, so looking very decent, actually, a uh, very nice convective structure to it. It's got a defined eye, uh, very, very cool cloud tops around the center of circulation as well. And it's spinning itself up very, very nicely. Now, contrary to what most Australian region tropical cyclones have, it's got very limited banding features. Now, what a banding feature is, is basically those big streams of cloud and thunderstorms that move into a tropical cyclone. And you can see Angrek actually has none of that. It's just got a couple of small little wispy outflow features towards the north and the south, the southern side. It did have a bit of an outflow feature towards the eastern side, but that seems really dissipated. Uh, so yeah, it's a, what we call an annular cyclone, where it's got that donut sort of structure. Angrek is also really small. It's about 150 kilometers across from uh, east to west, north to south. It's a very small tropical cyclone, which means it's been able to make the absolute most of all of the conditions that it's uh, been offered, and which are reasonably favorable, actually, and we'll break that down very shortly, and I'll explain how this cyclone has gotten so strong. So yeah, it's a very decent looking tropical cyclone marching well away from the West Australian coastline, and it's gonna be heading towards Mauritius before diving south and getting absorbed by the Southern Ocean. Um, yeah, very strong, that's all I can say, a beautiful cyclone, and we did not expect it. Typically, when you see big tropical cyclones form, as we saw with Tropical Cyclone Kirli and why the forecast was so off and so terrible with it, and I do apologize profusely again for that. Um, I actually feel pretty bad about my very shoddy advice given through Cyclone Kirli. Um, Cyclone Curly was a very large system, so it struggled to really condense itself and wrap itself up nicely, whereas Angrek has remained really small, which means, A, the forecast models haven't been able to properly analyze the storm structure because they have uh, resolution caps, which means they're only able to analyze certain amounts of data um, at certain times because, well, I mean, you can't feed a supercomputer uh, millions and millions of pixels of data to analyze. Uh, that will just completely blow it up. So you've, there, there is a such thing called a data cap, which is why I talk about model resolution every now and then, but I digress. Uh, this storm has been able to make the most of its conditions because of its small size. Now, those conditions are very warm sea surface temperatures around the storm center right now of around 28 to 29 degrees Celsius, and that's why it's been able to get up towards Category 5 status. It's a Category 5 strength on the Australian scale, by the way, not on the Sapphire Simpson scale. Right now, it's got winds of 115 knots, so it's a Category 4 strength uh, on the Sapphire Simpson scale. You can see it actually cooled down the waters around the Cocos Islands because it has been stalling over there for the past couple of days. They're now at about 25 degrees Celsius, but because it's moving in this sort of um or more sort of this west southwesterly trajectory, it's actually going to find itself over some warmer waters soon, 29 degrees Celsius, and it should be able to intensify substantially more as it moves further into the southwest Indian Ocean. So I would not be surprised if this storm gets up to maximum wind speeds of around 250 kilometers an hour. Um, now, model resolution from what we have been talking about, the Eastern Bluedef has a model resolution of nine kilometers, which means it can analyze data nine kilometers squared, uh, and that's how it uh, blends its uh, wind data. And I'm, I'm really oversimplifying this because I could go on for hours about model resolution. It's a little bit complicated, but because the Eastern Bluedef is a low resolution model, or it's actually a high resolution model, but it's low in comparison to some of the American forecast models, um, it's only analyzed this storm and initialized it with a pressure of 900 98 millibars, which is completely off. This storm probably has a pressure of around 935 to 945 millibars at this time. So the Eastern Bluebird has initialized this storm very wrong. Similar story with the GFS, although they're just doing a little bit better. The Access G3 model is actually not doing too bad with this tropical cyclone. It's got peak wind sustained of 110 kilometers an hour, which is about half of what the cyclone actually has. But it is a little bit better than the Eastern Bluebird and the GFS. Now, let's take a look at wind accumulation, which is the maximum wind gust over certain locations for the next 10 days. And this gives us a very defined idea of where this cyclone is going to be tracking. You can see it is, it's expected to be a peak intensity right now, but because of the conditions that it's got ahead, I believe that this storm will actually intensify a little bit more over the next three days. Uh, peak wind speeds, I reckon this is about 
or 60% of what the actual peak wind speeds will be at. So I would estimate peak wind gusts um, from this at about 225 to 235 kilometers an hour um, as per the access G3 forecast. I think the Eastern GF might be a little bit more bullish or not actually. The GFS, because it's a far lower resolution model, it actually really struggles with these cyclones. And the Icon model as well has been doing fairly well with this tropical cyclone, but they can generally overestimate quite substantially on maximum wind gusts. So I generally take them uh, forecast with a grain of salt and it does look like they've overestimated slightly. But you can see the general track of the cyclone takes it towards Rodriguez and Mauritius before it recurves down uh, towards the southeast and then gets sucked up by the Southern Ocean jet stream and gets pushed into the roaring 40s and it will die off there. Um, in around five days time, but still a very impressive tropical cyclone. Um, a very small system as well, so it's uh, still got opportunity to rapidly intensify further, and the conditions are very good for its intensification. I believe peak intensity will be about in about two days, so if we put the cursor for about two days ahead on where the storm's track is going to be, and we take a look at sea surface temperatures there, it's gonna be moving through a pool of around 28 to 29 degrees Celsius sea surface temperatures. So that's why it's going to be so good for the system. The conditions are going to be really good and the storm will likely intensify. And this is a quick look at the JTWC forecast cone, the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. They're based in Hawaii, but they give storm updates on everything outside of the Atlantic uh, storm basin. Um, they have initialized this storm with winds of 90 knots, but they're calling for strengthening. That's the most important part of this bulletin is looking at what the storm's forecast to do in the future. They're calling for strengthening and actually on, I believe that Sunday, they call for the storm to reach peak intensity about a thousand or 1200 kilometers towards the east southeast of Rodriguez, which is over here with maximum sustained winds of 120 knots. So 30 knots higher than what they've got right now, which will probably put the storm with maximum sustained winds of around 140 to 145 knots. Uh, one minute sustained, so 10 minutes sustained. You're probably looking at about, or well, maybe about 130 knots, which is what, 250 to 260 kilometers an hour. That's well into category five status on the Australian scale. This will be a very strong cyclone in a couple of days. And I actually can't wait to see how it progresses because the start that it has had is very impressive. I mean, yeah, if we go back and take a look at satellite imagery, well, I've accidentally clicked too many buttons here. But if we go back and take a look at satellite imagery, it's looking really, really neat. Um, I'll just break down the infrared satellite imagery a little bit better. Now, typically when you want to see a, tr a intensifying tropical cyclone, you want to see a complete band of reds and blacks around it. This storm's got a pretty broken band of reds and blacks around it, so it's not peaking right now. It's still intensifying, and it's certainly not a Category 5 strength tropical cyclone on the Sapphire Simpson scale, but it's it's got the visibility to look like a Category 5 on the Australian scale, which is why I've called a Category 5 strength tropical cyclone here, and it's got some very cool convection up towards the north, of the system and that means that basically there's some very strong thunderstorms on the northern side of this tropical cyclone meaning it, it, it is very decent and it's, it's looking very decent and it's likely at category five status at this point in time with a little bit more strengthening still in the tank. A very impressive tropical cyclone, that's for sure. Did not expect this out of Angrek. The Bureau of Meteorology has completely missed the system once again. They only called for a peak of category one status out of this on the Australian scale, so they've missed the mark on this. But again, all the forecast models have. Um, the storm was definitely in an environment that supported an intensity up towards category five status and every now and then an Australian cyclone completely defies the forecast models, but the Bureau of Meteorology has now missed three systems this cyclone season out of three systems. So uh, their strike rates are not looking too good. But then again, I don't think mine's looking too good. And the weather model strike rate is not looking too good either. So it's been a very hard season to forecast so far. And hopefully we get uh, a couple fewer curveballs thrown at us in future tropical cyclones. But that's all for me for this quick update on Cyclone Angry. I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.